Hi everybody. I, I did not miss it. I know it's time. I'll be right back. I have to go check my dinner. I have to make sure it's cooking, okay? Hold on. I'm going to leave you for a few seconds while I check the Instant Pot. I have some frozen chicken uh, in there, and so I just want to make sure that it's uh, building up pressure, okay? So in the meantime, while I go down and check on the chicken, spend a few moments here with our Lord in the tabernacle behind me. I'll be right back. Okay, okay, I'm back. I thought it'd be good to leave you some little time with Jesus here. Um, hi, everybody. I just sorry I had to go uh, make sure the chicken was cooking down there. I'm gonna have a little, uh, little frozen chicken. Hopefully, it won't be frozen after this. I found out that, that everything you cook in the uh, in the instant pot is just it's, it happens quickly. It's moist. It's really good. So I'm excited. I have that and then some uh, candy corn, I think. So some vegetables as well. So anyway, okay, great. Well, here we go. So um, hello, it is Wednesday, May 6th, and um, it's good to be with you here. Uh, I said I would continue this through the um, end of the week through uh, for a couple more days, and then we'll we'll figure out how, how often we can do this, how often I can do this. It's gonna be tough because I can't pick, I can't say every other Wednesday or something like that. So I don't know what we'll do, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, yesterday I talked about the Eucharist and talked about Mass, actually, and walked people through the Mass and um, kind of just explaining every, almost all the steps and what they mean to us and for us. And uh, so today I thought, just in continuing that theme, talking about the Eucharist, I would talk about a, um, a part of the Eucharist we don't really talk about or, or one of, the, um, one of the explanations for why we celebrate the Eucharist. We know that the Eucharist is one of the seven sacraments, of course, along with the sacraments of uh, baptism and confirmation and reconciliation and anointing and marriage and the um, holy orders, ordination. We know that uh, the sacrament of the Eucharist is the greatest of all the sacraments, the um, source and summit of our lives. It is uh, the not only not just a sign of Christ's presence, but it, it is the Christ. It is Christ's real presence in word and sacrament given to us. But how about focusing on the Eucharist as sacrifice? It is a representation of the sacrifice of Christ. So what does that mean? You might have heard it. People say it's Christ's it's blood, his bloodless sacrifice on the altar. You know, it is a repetition of his sacrifice at Calvary, etc. And this can be confusing, not only to Catholics, but also to those who are not of our faith, who say, wait, 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 wait. It clearly says in Scripture, in Hebrews, that Christ died once and for all. There is no need to repeat that sacrifice. Then why do Catholics repeat that sacrifice over and over again? Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll answer that in a minute. Um, but just so I thought I'd give a few give a little reflection on the Eucharist as sacrifice. And in order to do that, we need to understand what is sacrifice? What does that mean? It's kind of a, um, it's a, it's, we read about it in the Bible, but it's very foreign to us. What does it mean to sacrifice? Why did they sacrifice animals? And what was that all about with the blood and everything? Well, in the Old Testament, in the time of the law, it was you know, the goal was to maintain the law, to keep the law, to be blameless before God. And, you know, just by opening your eyes, it seemed, just by, you know, even unintentionally, you could break a law. You could bring uh, sin into your body, you know, into your eyes or whatever, by so many ways. Much, And then, of course, you could commit sin by actively doing something, stealing, striking someone, killing someone, something like that. So how would, could one be forgiven, if you will? How could one be made right again by the law? Well, God gave us, our ancestors, a sac sacrifices. And, and actually, as you see, especially in the book of Leviticus, the book of the law, 
you see that um, God gave us very detailed descriptions or instructions as to how to celebrate a sacrifice, um, how to sacrifice an animal, how to offer that to God, and for what purposes, for an unintentional sin, for a sin committed on behalf of the whole people, the community, for a sin that you did on purpose, etc. Different kinds of animals and things were offered to God according to one's ability to pay for that animal and due to the severity of the sin. Why animals? Why did we sacrifice animals? Well, it says in the Bible that part of the law says you shall not drink the blood or eat the blood of an animal because it is its life. So the thinking was for our ancestors that blood equals life. Makes sense. If an animal doesn't have blood, it doesn't have life. So the blood was for them the, the, the stuff of life, if you will. And therefore, it was the greatest gift you could give to God. That we needed something to atone for our sins. It couldn't just be something ordinary, something that we make with our hands. It has to be God-given. It has to be life, something great. But we know that God abhors human life, human sacrifice, because in the law, God verifies, or God very clearly teaches us about the sanctity of all life. Um, in that one commandment, you shall not kill, that, wraps, that, that really includes everything, but in a very positive way, we, we love life in all of its beautiful forms, from natural conception to natural death. So God abhors human sacrifice. And we see in the sacrifice of Abraham, his, his son Isaac, when God sent the angel to stop Abraham from sacrificing his son, that's definitively God's way of saying, I know a human sacrifice that is abhorrent, that shall not happen. But God made it possible for us to offer animals in atonement, in, in, in substitution for humans, for, for us. And so the person typically, there are many forms, many ways of sacrifice, but the, person's, the person would bring an animal to this, the temple. That's where the sacrifices were offered to God uh, at the altar. And the person would bring in, say, a bull, if it was a big sacrifice, a big uh, offering to God, or a goat, or a pair of turtle doves, as Mary and Joseph offered to uh, sacrifice for, their, for Jesus. Um, or maybe if they're really poor, they could bring a grain offering, something like that, fine flour or something. Anyway, with an animal, they would then put their hands on the head of the animal and say, you know, this life is my life. This life that is, I'm offering is my life to God. And not for the weak of heart, but they would, um, they would cut the animal's neck and they would drain the blood from the animal. And the priest then would take that blood and sprinkle it around or on the altar and then would take certain portions of the animal to put it in the holy fire. And the, the, the reasons for that, it's very important for us, the blood around the altar was our way of saying, okay, this is God, this is our connection with God. God was present in, you know, in the altar. That was God's the symbol of God's presence here on earth. And so they put the blood around the altar. They would take some of the meat, especially some of the fat of the animal, and put it on the holy fire, and that the smoke would go up to God like prayers and incense would go up to God. And sometimes, in some sacrifices, the person could actually eat of the, the meat uh, as a way to show communion with God and further identification with that sacrifice. So that was a big part of sacrifices. There, that's only just one sacrifice. There are many different forms. We know that sacrifice was also used to seal a covenant. When, it, God, made it, when God made a covenant with us, he ordered Moses or our ancestors to make a sacrifice, not just a small one, but a big sacrifice to seal that covenant forever. And so we think about the big one with the law, you know, when God told um, Moses to build an altar in a certain, with certain dimensions and take, it was a lot of bulls. I, 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 I don't know if it was thousands, but it was a lot of bulls, a lot of blood. God took, it, Moses took that blood and he dashed it on the altar threw it on the altar. That's like saying, okay, this is yours, God. This is our connection with you. And then it says he took the blood and he sprinkled it on the people. Now, during the Easter season, when we have the sprinkling rite in church, people get out of the way because here comes some water. Can you imagine being there with the, this blood coming out? But what the people understood, what that signified is this was communion with God. First, you have the gift of life, blood, 
being shared with God on the altar and then on us. This was the closest one could get with God basically here on earth. Why is all of that important? I think it's pretty obvious then. All of this we believe pointed to and prepared us for the perfect sacrifice in Jesus Christ. He is the Lamb of God. He is the altar. He is the priest. So he offered himself on behalf of all sinners. He is the sacrificial lamb offered once and for all for all of us. There was no need to take his blood and put it on an altar. He is God. He is the altar of God. And what about that part about us then, the people, sprinkling the blood on the people? Oh, the Eucharist. When we partake of the Eucharist, the body and the blood of Christ, that's our part in, being, in, in sharing that communion with Christ. And his death didn't just atone for sins of his own day for a certain group of people or even for a whole nation, but his death was so glorious, so awesome. His sacrifice was so perfect that it atoned for all sins of all time. Now we begin to understand a little bit more the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, we make that sacrifice which is just done once, never has to be repeated. We believe that in the book of Hebrews. We make it present to us again and again and again. Because even though that sacrifice was offered once and for all, unfortunately, we continue to sin day after day after day as individuals and as a community. So we need that atonement. We need that forgiveness day after day after day. And so the Eucharist actually represents that one perfect sacrifice of Christ on the altar. And then it gives us forgiveness for our sins. It strengthens us and it brings us into communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. It really is awesome, you know, to, to present it that way. And in reaching out to those who may not share our Catholic faith, I think this is a very important way to share our faith and why the Eucharist is so important. You know, for us growing up, we hear about sacraments, and that makes sense. But for one who doesn't really celebrate the sacraments like we do, talking about Christ as sacrifice, I think it, it, a lot of people, this worked for Dr. Scott Hahn. He, he was brought to the faith because of this, because of our um, the importance of covenant and sacrifice and the Eucharist in the Catholic Church. And so if we're able to explain to people, no, no, you see how it was revealed to God, this sacrifice, um, and you see what it did for our ancestors and how it pointed toward Jesus. And now you see that Jesus did that on the cross. He is the true lamb who was slain. This is what we celebrate day after day, Sunday after Sunday with masses celebrated on earth. It is not a re-crucifixion re re of Christ, of course. It is a representation of that one event that is our salvation. Here's what the Catechism says of this. I want to read a couple of paragraphs to you. And it's from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, um, paragraph 1362 onward, 63 onward. In the sense of sacred scripture, the memorial is not merely the recollection of past events, but the proclamation of the mighty works wrought by God for men. In the liturgical celebration of these events, they become in a certain way present and real. This is how Israel understands its liberation from Egypt. Every time Passover is celebrated, the Exodus events are made present to the memory of believers so that they may conform their lives to them. In the New Testament, the memorial takes on a new meaning. When the Church celebrates the Eucharist, she commemorates Christ's Passover and is made present, the sacrifice Christ offered once for all on the cross and remains present. Because it is the memorial of Christ's Passover, the Eucharist is also a sacrifice. The sacrificial character of the Eucharist is manifested in the very words of institution, this is my body given up for you. This is my blood poured out for you in the new covenant. In the Eucharist, Christ gives us the very body which he gave us for us on the cross, the very blood which he poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And then lastly, the Eucharist is thus a sacrifice because it represents, makes present, it says, the sacrifice of the cross because it, it is its memorial and because it applies its fruit. Okay, great. I just I invite you to keep 
reading. It's really great. Um, I could read several more paragraphs. The Eucharist is also the sacrifice of the church, etc., etc. It's really good. 1360s onward, if you really want to read about the, uh, the sacrificial nature of the Eucharist. Okay, um, I think I got that. I got that. I think I got pretty much all um, repeat. We got that, representing. Uh, and just, just again to, to remind us, the Eucharist, when we celebrate, it unites us here on earth with all people in the church, together with our Pope, our bishops, everyone, with those who have died. The atonement we celebrate in the Mass can be applied as well for their sins, the sins of those who have died and are in purgatory. Saints and the saved as well. It all comes together. It's a glimpse of heaven. And then lastly, what does, just concluding our time talking about Mass yesterday and today, what does Mass do for us? People ask that a lot. It strengthens our bond with Christ. Jesus said, the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in them. John chapter 6. So every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we abide in the Lord. We strengthen that relationship, that bond that we have with the Lord. Rather, he strengthens it in us. Mass also separates us from sin. It forgives those venial sins that we may have committed. Remember, mortal sins require the sacrament of reconciliation. Um, but it separates us from sin. And in a sense, it helps to prevent, it prevents future sins by giving us that grace, if you will, the grace from God, the strength that comes from God, God's real presence. It unites us with the mystical body of Christ the church throughout the world, and it points us toward and prepares us for the great banquet of heaven, when we won't need the Eucharist anymore. We will have the fullness of God's presence in heaven. So these are just some thoughts I wanted to share with you on the beauty and the, the awesome nature of the Eucharist. We know that it is a sacrament, but it's good to remember that it's also a sacrifice. Jesus Christ it came to, to take away the sins of the world by putting himself in our place and uh, offering his very blood, his life to God in atonement for our sins. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. I'm going to go check on my, um, my uh, chicken, which is in the Instant Pot, and see if that's right. I really don't have a recipe for it. I just take these frozen chicken thighs and, and I put them on my, in my little Instant Pot and just put like garlic on them and stuff, grub, rub, and all this stuff, and then a little water, and poof, it's done. It's great. Put some barbecue sauce on it, and you got a whole meal. I'm getting hungry. Okay. Sorry, God, I, I should, shouldn't talk about food here in the chapel. I'm going to leave you now. Um, I'll be back again tomorrow, and then on Friday, and uh, so one of these nights, I should probably tell a, uh, a, a good beep-beep story. Well, I don't know if there any of them are good, but a beep-beep story, so I'll do that. Um, Let's do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. Not sure what it's going to be about, but I'll think of a beep beep story for you, or for the kids, and then uh, we'll send you off on Friday. Um, yeah. yeah, we don't want to talk about that now, but anyway. Okay, great. All right, may God bless you, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for, uh, for joining us tonight, coming and tuning in, if you will. If you're in Milton, stay safe. I know there's a big brush fire out your way. Saw the smoke today coming back after work, so... Stay safe out there in Milton. Let's pray for our first responders that they can get that fire out. It's a large fire. And everyone else, may God bless you and keep you safe, keep you healthy and happy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good. Sorry, dang it. That was supposed to be the big end, big finish. I'll try it again. Good night.